Hi, I'm Deborah Flora, and I so appreciate your joining me for this very special interview that we are going to have. My show is every week at three o'clock weekdays, but I'm especially excited about this interview. I've spoken with Lori Smith before, and I want to set the stage. Next week, Monday, December 5th, a very important case is going to be heard before the Supreme Court, and it started right here in Colorado. I am very honored that I'm going to be helping to lead the rally while the case is being heard in the Supreme Court. In front of the steps on the sidewalk in front of the Supreme Court, there's going to be a gathering of people who are standing together for free speech, because that's at the heart of this case. And as you're watching, this affects you whether you know it or not. What I'm so excited excited about the rally is we're going to have people that are be, going to be speaking out about how important this is from every walk of life because this isn't an issue just for people of a particular party or a particular way of life. This is a case that is at the heart of every single Coloradans, every single American's right to create and to speak freely and it really hits me personally because as a former actress, as a producer, as a filmmaker, I've been on every side of this issue. At the heart of it, no one should be compelled to speak or to create art by the government or anyone else at, or be punished for choosing not to do that. Now, that's the setup, but I want you to hear from the people who are really behind this. This case is 303 Creative versus Alanis. It really is Lori Smith of 303 Creative standing for her right against the Colorado Civil Rights Division and the laws that have been passed, basically Colorado government officials that are limiting the freedom to create to pursue a field of work that uses her skills and her talents. So I'm gonna let her share that story, but I first wanna welcome, we have Lori Smith with us, and also from Alliance Defending Freedom, we have Kelly Fedoric. Welcome, ladies. Thank you for having us. So great to have you, and I've met you, Lori, in person. We have mutual friends, and um, you were one of the people I describe as someone who is one of those everyday heroes. You're a person that who you when you're met everybody just thinks is so kind and you, you have a grit in your spirit and still in your spine to stand up for all of us so let's let's start this back a little bit can you give us the background of your business 303 creative and then you know what has led you to this point point? then we're going to talk about more of the fine points of the case so Lori tell us about this well I am the owner of 303 creative I've had my business for over 10 years now and I create custom, unique, one-of-a-kind artwork through my graphics and my websites. Everything that I create is custom in nature and expresses some message. And I want to design for weddings. I have wanted to design for weddings for a long time, ever since I was a little girl. My mom had a boutique here in the Denver metro area. We're natives. And I spent a lot of time with her in her boutique, and she encouraged me to create and I watched her firsthand run her business and always knew that I too wanted the same. So I launched 303 Creative and I love what I do. I get to work with people from all different walks of life. I have clients who identify as LGBT. But what's important to know is that there are some messages I cannot create and design for through my business, no matter who requests them. And the government is compelling and censoring my speech forcing me to create and design artwork, custom artwork, custom expression that violates my view on marriage. That's not right. So I'm taking a stand to protect not only my freedom, but the freedom of all Americans, the freedom of all artists, including the artist who identifies as LGBT, who should not be forced to create custom artwork opposing same-sex marriage. That right to speak freely is guaranteed to each and every one of us, and it's worthy of protecting. Yeah, well, I so appreciate you taking that stand for all of us. And Kelly, uh, let's get a little background on this because I think a lot of people might think, oh, the Jack Phillips Masterpiece Bakery case, that solved this. The Supreme Court decided in his favor because he was also being targeted by this same law here in Colorado and really has been dealing with a lawsuit for over 10 years. 10 years. I mean, when people think about the human toll that this takes. But can you explain to us, Kelly, how that decision was limited and why this case is now necessary to really decide free speech, the right to create and on a broader scale. Well, one thing that's the same in both cases is Colorado has exemplified an incredible hostility and intolerance 
for different beliefs and seeking to coerce the speech of Jack and now Lori through their law. So that is that is the, the problem is certainly Colorado and its lack of respect for the freedom of speech of its citizens, which should concern all of the all Colorado, as you mentioned. What the Supreme Court ruled in 2018 in Masterpiece Cake Shop was that Colorado had exemplified such hostility toward Jack's religious beliefs and was was so awful in how it treated him and compared him to horrible things um, during that time period that they ruled that their actions violated the free exercise clause of the First Amendment. Because though Colorado's actions were so extreme, the Supreme Court never reached the free speech issue that was also at stake in Jack's case, because they were also trying to force, Colorado was trying to force Jack to custom create a message that went against the core of who he is. So in Lori's case, the Supreme Court has now taken up the free speech question and is asking, can the government force artists or force any Americans to either speak or to stay silent? We believe that free speech is for everyone. The Constitution protects that. And we're hopeful that in Lori's case, the Supreme Court will affirm that no one, the government cannot force anyone to say something that they, that they don't believe. And I think it's encouraging that the Supreme Court decided to hear this case because they could have just stepped away and not taken it further. And everyone afterwards realized there were some unanswered questions. So I think that is very, very encouraging. And Lori, I think what's interesting also is to realize that you did what I hope more people do. You, you preemptively said, I need to stand up against this so I can create. It's not that a lawsuit was brought against you, you are challenging an unjust law, which is really the, the history of human uh, civil rights throughout our country's history is challenging unjust laws. Can you talk to us about that? That What led you to take this um, preemptive action for all of us? Well, several years ago, I was excited to step into designing and creating for weddings, but I was very cautious because I was looking very closely to what was going on here in Colorado and the way that Colorado was treating other people of faith and punishing them for creating consistently with their beliefs. So I was concerned. I reached out to my pastor who referred me to Alliance Defending Freedom and I spoke with them and they cautioned me, you could be in a great deal of trouble if you create custom unique artwork that's consistent with your beliefs. And so I prayed about it and I considered it for, for some, some time and decided ultimately that the state, no government has the right to control and compel speech. That mm -hmm. right is guaranteed to each and every one of us. And that the right to speak freely protects not just me, it protects the LGBT web designer, it protects um, every American, it protects the generation who, who's, who's young now who might want to grow up and custom design artwork like I do. Everyone should be free to control the content of their own, own speech. Yeah, and I think that's key because just like Jack Phillips, it's not the person, it's the message. You have served LGBT members of the community, people who are atheists, Muslim. It doesn't matter. It's not about the person. It's about the message that you are being asked to create. Is that correct? Absolutely, that's correct. I work with people from all different walks of life. I love that about my job. I cannot create every message, though, that's requested of me. There's some messages I cannot create no matter who requests them. What the government's saying is that it has the right to force someone to set aside their deeply held beliefs, whether those beliefs are similar to mine, maybe they're different, but that it has the power to force an individual to set aside those deeply held convictions to create custom artwork supporting and celebrating a contrary viewpoint. That's not right. That mm -hmm. the right to speak freely protects each and every one of us. And when I chose a, a career in creating custom artwork, I did not surrender my First Amendment rights. Yeah, without a doubt. And, and this is something that's very personal to me because I shared in the opening, there was a time, I actually call it my period of temporary insanity, but it happened anyway when I was an actress. But I did it because I loved the craft of acting. It was art. I did the Nash American Shakespeare Company and then I did movies. And when you think about how absurd this rule is in Colorado, it's more extreme than in California. When I was an actress, I had the right to turn down a role. It, there's a perfect example of when I was offered a lead role in a movie. I had auditioned, I'd gone through the entire process, 
and I got to the end and right before I was ready to sign the contract, the director hands me a new script and says, oh, by the way, there's additional pages. And I looked at it and the pages all just exploited women completely. And I had the right, as I should, to say, I'm sorry, I respectfully decline. You can find another actor. And it never occurred to anyone in that room that they had the right to compel me to do that role, to give my artistic creative, you know, creative talent to that. And in reverse, my husband and I have a film company. We hire we hire artists all the time, be they art directors or set designers or lighting uh, you know, people, the gaffers. We've had people come to us even after we'd signed a contract and started that said, oh, I found out more about this project. I don't really agree with it. I'm gonna have to step away. We were 100% fine with that. Never once did it occur to me, and I'm sure it wouldn't to you, Lori, either, that I had some right over their skills, that I could compel them to work on a project. I, I agree with you, we stand for this right for everyone, whether they don't agree from any perspective. Let's talk about that for a moment. Lori, as an artist, so people can understand, you and I have both been artists and continue to do our artwork. What does that mean? That's an extension of yourself. Sure, and my faith plays a, a, a very large part of my artwork. My faith inspires the way I create, the way I look at a project. So when someone is requesting uh, to work with me and to for me to create custom um, artwork and expression, it's important that um, it's consistent with my, my beliefs and that yeah. I'm excited about it and passionate about it. And that's because everything that I create is unique and one of a kind. And the artistic process involves me creating on a blank canvas. Sometimes that canvas is on a sketch pad, sometimes it's on a computer, but very much like an artist, a traditional watercolor artist uses a canvas and paintbrush and water. I approach my work the same way. It's unique, it's different, and it expresses some sort of message. Mm -hmm. And the government does not have the right to force citizens to create through custom expression, unique, one of yes. them custom expression, um, messages that go against the core of who they are. So when I'm standing to protect, protects not only me, Lori, 303 Creative, protects the LGBT web designer just as well. Yes, it does. I know a lot of people want to make this to a very simplistic situation. Oh, it's just Christians against the LGBT community and that nothing could be further from the truth. I mean, I know what I hope people understand is this case will protect the right of a Muslim t-shirt designer to not have to make something celebrating uh, the Passover or whatever they don't want to, or uh, someone from the LGBT community to make a cake supporting, you know, scripture that, you know, from a, from the Bible that talks about, you know, traditional marriage and leans towards that. In fact, Kelly, I want to bring that up because there is a hypocrisy and an inconsistency in the way Colorado government officials have implemented this rule. Um, from my understanding, shortly after Jack Phillips was being punished and persecuted, really, I'll just come out and say it, for choosing not to make a cake for, uh, for gay marriage, and he doesn't make them for Halloween or supporting drugs and alcohol, whatever. Likewise, there was, from my understanding, some of the LGBT community who refused to make a cake with a, a scripture from Leviticus. You know, to decline messages they didn't want to custom create, which really goes back to the government is trying to silence views and beliefs that it doesn't like. And that should really frighten all of us, regardless of where we are from, from a faith standpoint or no faith at all, or a political or ideological standpoint, political winds come and go, but free speech is, in, is, is essential to a free and flourishing society. It's good for all of us. It benefits um, civil rights movements, as you mentioned, throughout history, that ability to come together in society and to think and to dialogue and to create and to speak freely, the government's not supposed to force any of us to go against the very core of who we are. And so mm -hmm. this freedom is what's at stake and, and Colorado absolutely needs to protect everyone's freedom and not just try to silence some views just because it doesn't happen to like those particular views. You know, and I think what's what every person of uh, goodwill and common sense can recognize in this, you know, Lori, there's, you know, by some counts, at least a quarter of a million, if not more graphic designers that anyone could go to all across the country. So it's one person being forced to do that is 
um, absurd. I mean, even if there were only three, it doesn't matter. The principle is still the same. Am I correct about that? There are so many other graphic designers and artists that, that people of a community could go to that, you know, it's fine for them. They have a different viewpoint. Is that correct, Lori? I'm sure there's actually, there's probably more than 250,000. <laughs> but yes. what's important to note is that we all have different beliefs on marriage and, and other sorts of things. And we should be allowed to live and work consistently with those beliefs without the government punishing some of us. This mm -hmm. case will protect the right for everyone to choose the content of their own speech and not be forced to create custom artwork, custom messages, unique expression uh, that goes against their deeply held views. Yeah, well, and the, the bottom line of free speech is it is only free if it's free for everyone. I mean, even if someone's saying something that someone finds completely obnoxious, well, then just don't listen. That's where it happens in the free marketplace of ideas. But if, if one person's speech is not free, then when political winds change, there could be something else now that is, uh, that is censored and not allowed. That's why no matter where anyone comes down this issue, you need to realize this is vital to the the continuation of our society and the flourishing of human beings. You know, Lori, there's a personal cost to this. We've talked about the 10 years that Jack Phillips has been dealing with this. Talk about how long this has been a process in your life and what you and your family have had to deal with. Well, I've been in litigation now for over six years and it certainly has been a roller coaster starting moments after we filed six years ago I received quite a bit of backlash, and that includes everything from death threats, which have continued, especially as we get closer to oral arguments, threats of bodily harm. Um, I have a neighbor who posted my home address on social media. Um, I have people who are constantly trying to hack into my business website. My clients have been harassed. I have a security system on my home. It's been very challenging. Um, and I think what's hard for me is that what I'm standing to protect protects the right of everyone, including those people who've sent me terrible emails. I'm standing for their right to live consistent with their beliefs as well. Yeah. And I think it's important for people to understand and remember that I love my job and I love working with people from all walks of life. And I have clients who identify as LGBT, but no government should be forcing people to communicate through custom artwork, things they don't agree with. Yeah. Thank you for taking this stand. I mean, I, I can't imagine the cost. And, you know, it's time where we need to come as a society. We're realizing agreeing to disagree. If you disagree with someone, it's not hate speech. If you disagree with someone, it's just standing up. And I talk about this all the time. I would fight for everyone's right. My husband, 82nd Airborne veteran, he talks about one of the reasons why I put the uniform on is the right of people to say things that he might consider to be completely absurd, but that's their right. Um, how can people support you, Lori? I mean, because you and your family are going through a lot. And we owe you a debt of gratitude because you've stepped into the arena. You're taking the slings and arrows and you know, whether people understand it or not, they, everyone should be grateful for your willingness to do this. How can we support you through this? I would encourage people to um, pray about this case and consider all the people who are involved in having a hand in getting us to this point. It's been a long journey. Um, Consider um, praying for Alliance Defending Freedom and all the legal staff who are prepping for Monday and also just praying for an outcome that's favorable, that protects yes. many. And um, I I'm just so grateful for this opportunity. And I recognize that it's been a challenge, but I, I also appreciate the support and the emails that come in that are supportive and the notes that I've received. They've carried me a long ways throughout this process. Um, and while it has been a challenge, the right to speak freely is worthy of protecting and I wouldn't have yeah. changed a thing. Yeah, I so appreciate that. And as you're watching this, do I encourage you be praying for the outcome for Lori and her family because a family goes through all of this. Uh, encourage her because these are the moments where we have to stand. We have to fight. Our government system is 
one of the best ideas ever created for the governance of humankind and the judicial system is one of the last checks and balances we have and we have got to stand in these places um kelly let's talk a little bit about next monday because i'll be outside the court i'll be <laughs> i'll be in front of the steps leading the free speech rally and being out there you know just letting people know and the media see that this is for everyone from every walk of life there's no there's no straw man argument that can hold up against us we'll have people from every walk of life speaking but tell us about what will be going on inside the supreme court because that's something that very few people get to see and what you expect to happen in that time with the justices well colorado and colorado attorney general phil weiser have have their work cut out for them because they are trying to advance arguments that are unprecedented they agree that Lori serves everyone, regardless of who they are, and that every website, every piece of art she creates is custom expression and that it's speech. And yet they still claim the right that they can compel her speech. So they're going to have to present that argument to the Supreme Court. And our hope and what we'll be advocating for is that the government is, should not be an opponent of freedom. It should be freedom's greatest protector. Uh, mm -hmm. So we will be inside the Supreme Court. My colleague, Kristen Wagner, will be arguing on behalf of Lori before the nine justices, asking them and, and telling them and sharing with them why free speech is for everyone. It must be protected. And protecting it for Lori means protecting it for each and every person listening today and for Americans across this country. Because what Lori does is, is custom. We're talking about expression here. We're not talking about um, her selling coffee or selling hamburgers. Everything she does is custom art. And that cannot be coerced. And so we will be hopeful and, that the and watching the justices closely to, to look at the questions they're asking and hopeful that they will rule favorably for Lori and for all Americans. Yeah, that's gonna be very interesting to see because I I don't know how Phil Weiser, yes, if you know everyone here in Colorado, that is the Colorado Attorney General, is going to go before the Supreme Court of the United States and say, Lori doesn't discriminate. She serves people from every single walk of life. She just has a right to use her skills to advance a message according to her beliefs or not be compelled to advance a message that doesn't fit with her beliefs. And somehow they're going to try and argue that that is not a complete and total violation of the First Amendment. And you know, Kelly, you said it perfectly. It's time we get back to understanding government has one role and one role only, and that is to protect the rights of its citizens, mm -hmm. not to dictate who gets to have those rights and who doesn't, because that can change with the wind. Um, and remembering these are God-given rights. Mm -hmm. Our founders knew that. It's not given by government. Government can't take it away. So um, that's a very key thing. So the process, for many people don't know, you'll, this will be heard on Monday. How long approximately will that be? And then what's the process until the decision comes out? Well, so arguments on Monday could go anywhere from about an hour and a half up to, you know, even two and a half, three hours. Sometimes argument takes quite a bit of time. It has lately with some of the cases that have been before the court. And then afterwards, the, the justices will meet later in the week. They'll conference and they'll decide how they're going to rule and how they're going to write the decision. And then the waiting game begins. Uh, it's quite likely we won't get a decision from the court until probably May or June. We definitely will have a decision by the end of June, but we do have probably a number of months to wait uh, till we hear how the Supreme Court will rule in Lori's case. So Monday is certainly a big, a big day for Lori and for all Americans. And we certainly look forward to the months after as we continue to make the case that we're not supposed to be government mouthpieces, that the government is supposed to respect everyone's freedom. Yeah, and there's a reason why this is the First Amendment, the, the most important right that is protected. Because honestly, you know, as speaking and creating, that comes from the very core of who we are. Basically, if the government can compel you to say something you don't believe or create art, create art for something you don't believe, the government can tell you who is acceptable for you to be or not to be. And it is the beginning. I've been in the Soviet Union. I was in East Germany, far behind the wall. I've seen how that looks and how that works and is the exact 
opposite of freedom. So the stakes are high. Um, by the way, as a 710K and US listener, you can see the rally we're going to be leading, free speech advocates out in front of the Supreme Court next Monday, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, which is 6.30 a.m. Mountain Time, all the way through until you'll see Lori and the Alliance Defending Freedom team coming out. And you can be praying during that. You can be encouraging. You could even come, by the way. Let's get a road trip and get a lot of free speech advocates out there so people can see how much this matters. So I, I really appreciate it. I appreciate what you do. I think one of the final things that I want to do is because you know, we're in a season where people need encouragement, where there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of fear to stand up and do the right thing, but I have a greater fear of not standing up and doing the right thing, and I know that's what motivates you. Lori, what would you say to others who maybe are afraid to take a bold step like you did? Uh, what would, how would you encourage them in what you're doing? Because already your story is an encouragement, but what would you say to those listeners and viewers? I would say that we live in an incredible country and the right to speak freely is worthy of standing for. And yes, it can be difficult, but what I've learned over the last six years is that I'm not alone. There are so many incredible people out there willing to stand as well and support and um, protect these rights that are important to each and every one of us. Yeah, that's so true. I have certainly found that when we stand for what's right, we may lose some friends, but we'll make even better ones <laughs> because there are people that are living with a purpose that realize what is at stake. And once again, this issue is not a Republican versus Democrat, a Christian versus LGBTQ. This is a human rights issue at the very core of who we are. And it's so important. Would either one of you ladies want to say any last word before, uh, before we end this? Well, I'll just, I'll just end and just say that we are so grateful for the support that we have from so many and we just continue to hope and, and pray that the Supreme Court will rule the right way in this case and we look forward to what they will do and to know that free speech really does matter for, for all of us mm -hmm. and our society will, and for, our, for the next generation. We don't pass freedom on to the next generation in the bloodstream as, as President Reagan said. We have to stand yes. for it. We have to work for it. And it really truly is worthy of protecting regardless of who we are, what our beliefs are. It, it matters for each and every one of us as Americans. It really does. And, you know, being a mom and I know, you know, Laura, you are as well. And and that is one of the things that motivates me every day. And it's always good to end with a Reagan quote. What I think is at stake here is what he said so long ago. We have a rendezvous with destiny. Lori and Kelly, you both are meeting that goal, this rendezvous with destiny. And, but he goes on to say, we will preserve for our children this, the last best hope of man on or earth or sentence them to take the final step into a thousand years of darkness. Well, not on our watch, not because um, of the great work that you ladies are doing. You are standing in the gap, so that doesn't happen. Not just for everyone alive today, of every walk of life, but for future generations. So thank you both so much. I look forward to seeing you in DC, and thank you again for the strong stand that you're taking. Thank you, Deborah. I appreciate your support. You got it. Well, God bless you both. And thank you for watching. You can support Lori Smith, 303 Creative, the case being heard before the Supreme Court by supporting her, encourage her, pray for the justices, pray for justice to be done for everyone, and join in either by watching the rally streaming here on 710knus.com or by making a road trip. Liberty loves company, so join me there in front of the Supreme Court so we can cheer Lori and the ADF team on as they exit the Supreme Court. Thank you so much, and thank you for watching.